What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be the worst things I've ever seen. So, starting with babies. Um, I was probably four, three, four years into my career and I was scan scanning a OB and she was coming in for a um, fetal anatomy scan. And so I was excited because at that time I hadn't really done a lot of OBs, but um, I knew how to scan them. I just didn't know, uh, I just didn't have a lot of patience. So she was coming in and I was excited about it. And so I laid her down on the table, I prepped her and um, it was her and her husband and they already had a little girl. So he was holding the little girl and um so I, I got all set up right and i asked her her name i did every you know her history and all this stuff and so i started scanning i saw the femur first i measured the femur i you know went from the femur i got the feet i looked at i did the abdomen um the kidneys uh the you get also the stomach shot, the three vessel cord. I did all that, right? And then I'm moving up and um, it, I go to do the brain. Well, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm missing it because I'm not seeing it. And so um, I'm scanning and I see the face. I see, um, I got, uh, I saw the face of the baby and um, it was just like, my like stomach just didn't feel right. So I was like, oh my gosh, like what is going on? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I went and got the senior tech that was working there at the time. And so I said, I need you to come in. I said, I scanned the whole baby. I did um, from the feet all the way up to the head, but I don't see the structures of the head. So I maybe I'm missing it. Maybe the position is off or what have you. So, um, I ended up going, she ended up coming in and scanning and it was horrible. I, my stomach dropped, like my heart fell to my stomach and I was sad immediately. And, but we have to, as techs, we have to keep our poker face on, right? So I finished the exam and I told her, you know, just be patient. I've got to go discuss the case with the doctor. We'll be back. So it was just what I thought it was, but I wanted the other tech to confirm it. And I'm like, maybe I'm just missing something and maybe it's really there, but it was anencephaly. It was my first case and of this. And since then I have not found or seen another fetus with no brain. Um, but the heart was there, the four chamber heart, everything was there. And so I was just like, please don't let it be this. But this is why we do our job. We go searching for things, right? Where's Waldo type of situation. So um, that was the only case that I found of that in my 19, 20 years of scanning. But um, that, was, that was horrible. So yeah. The doctor said, um, don't let her leave. We sent her to her OB and she was assessed with her OB and I'm not sure, I didn't follow the patient, but we sent her to her OB. The next case is um, finding a fetal hemorrhage bleed in the cerebellum, I believe, hemisphere of the brain or section of the brain. Um, I was doing uh, fetal brains at the time and when I found my first bleed I was just like oh my gosh like what what's gonna happen like I immediately started talking to the nurses about the patient and you know about the baby and just trying to figure out like what what's gonna happen and she was just telling me that um, majority of them actually dissipate like they go away and or they shrink which is wonderful news and the baby thrives and continues on some of them don't and it you know remains there and it applies pressure and things you know worst case scenario the next case is near and dear to my heart which is breast cancer um, I found breast cancer on numerous of patients but 
it was gut-riching when I found my first case because I was just like, ugh. I don't ever like to find anything bad on patients and when my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer it was like I didn't want to touch a breast ever again like no and my dad had to talk with me like this is what you do this is the reason why you do your job and to help patients you know they don't know what's going on inside their body so when you scan them you're actually helping them don't think that it's a hindering experience for you just think of it that you're blessing that patient. So that's what ended up happening. But um, breast cancer, breast cancer, you know, is found in one of seven women um, and it is prevalent and you need to be cautious, you know, switch your deodorants um, to natural deodorants. Don't wear underwire bras if you don't have to. Um, take good care of your breast, do self exams. Um, I'm finding lately a lot of young women don't know how to do self breast exams. Um, and it's real simple, you know, you lay down with your arm up or, and you just go like in a pie shape around your breast up into the axillary area and just really get to know your breasts, get to feel around the lumps and bumps. Lumps and bumps are normal. Filling your breast tissue is lumpy. So get to know your, your your breast really well. And if something comes up or if you feel something that you're not quite sure about, get it checked out by your doctor and they'll do an ultrasound exam to follow that up. Or if you're under the age of 40, then yeah, they'll do an ultrasound. But if they find a lump within, I wanna say like you are between the 30 and 40 range, you might get a mammo and an ultrasound. Don't quote me on that, but because each case varies depending on if there's family history um, of breast cancer, depending on, you know, are they actually sure that this is breast cancer and they want to work this patient up as a diagnostic. It just depends. But definitely go see your doctor first. So the next one is testicular cancer. Uh, my first case was a guy who rode his mo motorcycle and he always wore like tight pants and he came through the ER and he was like, you know, I didn't want to come in, but I'm, I'm having pain. I don't know why. And so he was like, you know, I rode across, I think, California or something, he said. And um, after I did that ride, it just, my testicles didn't feel right. And so he was like, maybe I just sat on them too long. I don't know. But so he came to the ER and when, as soon as I put that probe down, it was like hard, like rock hard. I was just like, whoa, this is not right. This is not good so come to find out it was actually metastatic testicular cancer I mean it had went up to his liver as well and that was a hard case for me and because it was like he was like you know in his 30s and he was a young guy and I was just like oh lord please help and um so when I saw it and I went to go discuss it with the doctor, he sent him back to the ER and of course he was worked up as a, whatever his wishes were. I'm not sure if he even went to chemo or did any radiation or I don't know, surgery, I'm not sure. I didn't follow him up, he was an ER patient. But that's what happened with that one. That was like a really crazy case. The next one is a triple aneurysm. I was working and in the ER, I was, you know, this is when I was traveling and I was working on um, outpatients, but on a Saturday. So they scheduled some outpatients on, on a Saturday and I was scanning this guy and he was like, you know, I'm having abdomen pain and, you know, the doctor wanted me to come over here to get scanned, you know, whatever. And so I did his abdomen, but ladies and gents, his and his <laughs> aorta, mid aorta, not involving the renal arteries, um, was six centimeters. I was just like, oh my gosh. I couldn't get a hold of his doctor. I was not advised, I can't advise him to go to the ER. I'm not a doctor. Um, I called the radiologist and they told me to send him home and have him follow up with his doctor the next morning. And I just told the patient, I'm like, don't sneeze, don't lift nothing. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, that's what happened. A triple aneurysm, six centimeters. And I think like it was, it was huge. It was the biggest triple aneurysm I've ever seen. And, um, yeah, that was, that was crazy. That was a crazy one. Um, because it was just an outpatient who was just coming in for abdomen pain. Um, two uteruses. The patient, I had the next page, the next exam that I've witnessed or seen, the patient had two um, uteruses, and this is known as didelphus. And um, I was like, what? This is actual case? Like, wow, I'm actually having a patient with this on, like with this uterus type? And uh, so that was weird because I scanned one uterus and it was completely, you know, um, fine from above. Transabdominally, I did not see this, you know, transabdominally, you don't see them too separate or whatever. So when I went in through the vagina, through the EV probe, I scanned, you always scan through. And so she had two uteruses um, and she had two cervixes. So that's what didelphus is, two separate uteruses um, and two cervixes. So that's what happened. It was weird. I <laughs> Sorry to call it weird, but to me at that time, I was fresh in this field and I was just like, whoa, like what is, what am I seeing? So I did the exam um, endo endovaginal and that's when I saw it. And I was scanned through the first uterus and as I was scanning to the left, um, that's when the other one came into appearance. And I was like, wow, but that's not the kicker. The kicker is she was pregnant in one of her uteruses. Five weeks, I think it was six days with a heartbeat, fetal pole, everything. I was just like, what? No way. And so, um, really. So I discussed the case with the doctor and we let her go. We told her OBGYN um in the report and yeah it's normal to have a baby you can have a baby with a, with didelphus it's normal to be pregnant in one of the uteruses but she also could get pregnant in the other one at the same time I'm not sure if you ever heard of those cases but they're out there the last case final and last case is pancreatic cancer and it ended up being on a on a lady and it was early, 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 early stages. I mean, and it was, too, it was just a faint spot on her pancreas tail that I'm like, am I seeing something or am I not? And when you're in doubt like that, it's best to call it something and let them work up the patient versus you saying, nope, it's nothing. Because they would rather, me personally, I would rather say it's something questionable something, possible something seen in the pancreas and send that patient to have a CT scan or MRI workup and evaluate it more deeper than me being a tech and being okay with just saying, nope, I don't see nothing. Oh, it's just gas or, oh, it's just this. But, so I'm glad I called it and the doctor was just like, are you sure? Cause I'm barely seeing something. And the radiologist was telling me, you know, I'm like, she's like, mm, I don't know, Tamika. I'm like, no, I, I believe something might be there. And I said, what's the worst case scenario? She gets worked up and she goes have another scan. I said, and if it's nothing, it's nothing. But if it's something, at least we, we are following it up and we caught it, right? So coming to, come to find out, it was something. And the lady brought me flowers and everything and thanked me like, you saved my life. Thank you so much. And oh my gosh, I, it was, it had me in tears. So that's all for this video. I really want to thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. And if you did, please leave a comment below and also give a thumbs up to this video. It really helps me and also share it, please. I want to say thank you again for watching this video. And if you like this video, you would definitely like my next one. See you next time.